Hello everyone, and welcome to Can I Beat Pokemon Sword with Pierce's Team and Odynamax. This is Pierce's Team, an all dark team with a reliance on status moves. Now, let's set some ground rules you will all listen to and understand, right? First, I can only use Pierce's Pokemon and their pre-evolutions. I can use any moves they learn upon level up, but the end goal is to clearly match Pierce. I say this because most of the Pokemon's moves are like from level 30 and up. Next, I cannot Dynamax for gym battles or any story related battle for that matter. For grinding, I am not allowing Dynamax for 1 to 4 star raids. But here is my only, and I mean only, exception. I am allowing Dynamax for 5 star raids. There is no way anyone is beating a 5 star raid with this moveset, especially with the double shields. Now, let's begin. I start by catching a Zigzagoon on Route 2. According to Bulbapedia, Pierce's Obstagoon has Reckless for its ability, which means I need to catch a Zigzagoon with Pickup. The Zigzagoon we decided to use was Impish Nature, so more defense and less special attack. Pierce's team is almost all physical, so this could be beneficial. We start with Tackle, Leer, and Sand Attack. We Battle Hop at level 9. We now had Snarl and Lick. Wulu goes down to 3 Snarls. And after that, Score Bunny. We Snarl to lower Ember's attack power just to be hit with a crit. We switch to Lick to get Paralysis. 2 Licks get us the Para, so we go back to Snarl. Two Snarls take out Score Bunny. Last is Hookity, and with only 7 HP remaining, we get a crit. And with that over, we get our Dynamax Bands, and it's off to the Wild Area to do some training. We have Zigzagoon at level 16. We attend the opening ceremony, and it's on to our next hop battle. I gave Zigzagoon the Silk Scar to power up our recently learned Headbutt. Wulu was a crit one shot with Headbutt. Scorbunny went down in two headbutts, and last is Rookity, who went down in three headbutts because Hop used the potion. We can now catch our second Pokemon, Stunky. I made sure to catch one with Aftermath. Also, we have a minus defense nature, which probably isn't good. We make our way through Route 3 and get our mind and into our first battle with B. I start with Zigzagoon against Solosis. Snarl left Solosis in red health which allowed it to endeavor Zigzagoon to red health. One more Snarl takes out Solosis. Hate is next. Snarl takes it to yellow health. Zigzagoon goes down to this hover voice. I send out Stunky. Stunky resists fairy moves and is immune to psychic. So beat goes for round as two acid sprays finish off her head. Gothia is last and can only use power. Our Acid Spray activates Gathia's competitive, but it can't use Psychic moves. Three Acid Sprays win us the battle. It's time for the first gym. For this battle, I need both my team members to be on equal level with Milo's. And as a result, it's easily going to evolve. We can finally learn our first move to match Pierce's Obstagoon, Throw Chop. But again, just because I have Throw Chop does not mean I will only use Throw Chop. Okay, back to my own. I started with Stunky. Three fights take out Gossifler, but we didn't get any punches. I keep in Stunky for Elder Gods. Acid Spray did very low damage, but we got it two small screens before Stunky went down. Elder Gods enters Dynamax as I send out Lightning. Dorotrop didn't do as much as I hoped, so he switched to Pin Missile. Pin Missile takes Elder Gods to Red Health as Magical Leaf takes Lainu to below half health. One more pin missile was this our first badge. Our next stop is Holberry, but first we have a hop battle. I start with Lainu. Headbutt took Wulu to a sliver of health, but Hop used a super potion. Two more headbutts take out Wulu. For a boot, we get a crit, so our next headbutt takes out Wulu. Last is Squirrel Squire, who goes down the two headbutts. 
the second gym is next. Now, with Milo, I had a super effective move. With Nessa, I had nothing. I had to grind a little and do some item hunting. I battled Nessa at level 27, with Stunky holding a citrus berry and Lainu holding the block glasses. I started with Lainu. We got confused by Goldie's water pulse, but Goldie went down to two night slashes. We got a crit one shot on Aracuda and Lancer Dreadnought. I switched to Stunky and go for Toxic, which we had just learned. Max Strike activates Stunky Citrus Berry. Dreadnought at odd speed, and we survive a crit Max Geyser on 1 HP as we go for Screech. Stunky goes down next turn, and I send out Lainu as Dreadnought ends its time max. Dreadnought's Razor Shell takes Lainu to 14 HP as Night Slash takes Dreadnought to Red Hell. Dreadnought goes down to Poison Damage. With that, we can catch our next Pokemon, Scraggy. But here's an issue. Pierce's Scraggy has Intimidate, which is its hidden ability. I'm not hunting dens for a hidden ability is crafty, so I decided to go with this Scraggy with Moxie. That's fair, right? Substituting a minus attack ability with a plus attack ability. However, this will not be the Scraggy we use. But before I get into that, we have another battle with Beedee, whose whole team was a one shot sweep with Throat Chop. Okay, as I was saying earlier, this Scraggy will not stay on our team. Pierce's Scrafty has Fake Out, which is an egg move, so we need to do some breeding. I put our female Scraggy in the daycare with a meow that knows Fake Out. And as a result, we get a Scraggy with Fake Out. It's got a pretty bad nature, but we'll have to make do. I immediately teach Scraggy Payback, so now it has half of its final moveset. The next big battle we have is against Marnie, back in Motor Soap. I start with Stunky. We go for Screech as Krogan hits us with Revenge. We go for two Screeches before attacking with Bite. Bite takes Krogan to a sliver of health. Stunky goes down, but Aftermath takes out Krogan. I send out Scraggy for Marnie Scraggy. We tried to go for Santa Town, but we were outsped and one shot with Lokin. I send out Lainu. Headbutt takes Scraggy to half health and gets a flinch. So one more headbutt takes out Scraggy. Last is Morpico, who goes down to pin missing. The third gym is next. Now, this is the first gym where the gym leader has a Pokemon with a super effective move. Also, our team is highly physical, so being burned will be a big issue. I decided to get Scraggy on equal level with the others, but we were still having issues. Turns out, the issue was who I was sitting out first. With the team in the low 30s, I decided to start with Scraggy instead of Stunky against Ninetales. At this level, Scraggy has his final move set. We start with the Fake Out and then go for Brick Break. Our Rossberry saves us from the first Will-O-Wisp, but not the second. It took three Brick Breaks to take out Ninetales, which activated our Moxie so our attack is back to normal, just for it to be lowered again by Arcanine's Intimidate. Scraggy got Arcanine to half health before going down. Lainude finished off Arcanine with Night Slash. I switched to Stunky for Sin Scorch. We got in two Screeches before Stunky went down. I bring out Lainu. Headbutt takes Sin Scorch to quarter health, but then Sin Scorch goes for Max Flare by, and we survive on 5 HP. One more Headbutt wins us our third batch. We can now go to Hammerlock, but first we go and catch our final team member, Inkei. And make sure to catch one on the contrary. Inkei was at level 28 and evolves at level 30. I tried to evolve it on the way to Stone Side but Inky's evolution requires holding the switch upside down. I tried holding my Pro Controller upside down, but no luck. I had to stop recording to hold my switch upside down to get my own We reached Stone Side and it's time for our next hot battle. I started with Malamar, who I had holding leftovers. At level 33, Malamar's moveset was complete after I gave it payback. Hop's Cramorant was a one-shot payback. 
Silly Cobra got off a glare, and we got bad luck with Paralysis, but Silly Cobra goes down to two nice slashes. Toxo was a one shot with Psycho Cut, and lasted for a week. Two nice slashes take it out. The fourth gym is next. I was a little worried for this gym, but I think Malamar will be our saving grace. I start with Malamar against him on top. Psycho Cut takes him on top to red health as Revenge takes us to half health. One more Psycho Cut finishes him on top. Pangoro is next, so I switch to Scraggy. We start with Fake Out and then go for Brick Break. Pangoro only used Workout, so it goes down to one more Brick Break. Surfash is next. I leave in Scraggy and go for Brick Break, but get one shot by Revenge. I send out our recently evolved Skunk Tank. Did you know Skunk Tank learns Flamethrower via level up? I thought it was just TM. Two hits with Flamethrower, take out Surfetch, and last is Machamp. We got two screeches before Machamp took out Skunk Tank. I bring back out Malamar. I do one shots Machamp with Psycho Cut. We have a battle with B next, but it was easy peasy. You know what's not easy? The fifth gym. Skunk Tank is the only member of our team who is not weak to fairy, but Dragon Kiss is still an annoying move to deal with. To battle this gym, I evolved my new to Obstagoon and replaced Night Slash with Obstruct. Obstagoon now has half of the time moveset. I also evolved Scraggy. I start with Malamar against Weezing. Psycho Cut did good damage, but Fairy Wind also did good damage. Oh, also, it seems that Opal's boost are not affected by Contrary. One more Psycho Cut takes out Weezing. I leave in Malmore to take Malmore's Intimidate before I switch to Crafty. Draining Kiss took like 40 HP per hit, so we couldn't do much damage, but we did get a Sand Attack before Crafty went down. I bring out Obstagoon. I tried using Obstruct, but Malmore used Iron Defense. We go for headbutt and try obstruct again. We block drain and kiss, and apparently it is considered a physical contact move because we got the defense drop. Thanks to that and Opal's attack boost, Mawa goes down to two headbutts. Toe kiss is next. We go for obstruct and block drain and kiss. Toe kiss goes down to a one shot. Last is our We use obstruct to lower the damage of GMX finale and then go for headbutt. Headbutt took half of Elkirby's health as Obstagoon goes down. We switch to Skunk Tank. We go for Toxic as GMX Finale activates our Citrus Bear. Venom Shock finishes off Elkirby. With that, we're back in Hammerlock for our next top battle. I start with Obstagoon. Trevenant was a one shot with Throw Trap. Heat More is next. Throw Trap took Heat More to low health as Fire Lash lowers our defense. Hop used a higher potion, so two headbutts take out Heatmore. Cinderace is next. I decide to go for counter, but Hop used agility twice before finally attacking. We survive Powerball and take out Cinderace with counter. Snorlax is next, so I switch to Scrafty. A fake out and two brick breaks take out Snorlax. Last is Bolton. Bolton's spark immediately paralyzes us, but one brick break takes out Bolton. The 6th gym is next. We start Scrappy against Barbaracle. Brick Break does big damage as Barbaracle lowers our speed with Rock Tube. Barbaracle then goes for Shell Smash, lowering its defense as we take it out. Stone Turner is next as a one shot with Brick Break. Shell goes into a KO, and we're at plus 3 attack going into Colossal. Max Flare takes Scrappy to low health, but so does our Brick Break. Scrafty goes down next turn. I switch to Obstagoon. Throw Chop takes Colossal to red health as Obstagoon survives the max flare. One more Throw Chop wins us our 6th badge. Next is another battle of Hop. I start with Scrafty against Double. Double goes down to 2 Brick Breaks, but Double had used Growl, so our Moxie boost was neutralized. Corviknight is next. It takes out Scrafty with Drill Pack. We switch to Obstagoon and start with Obstruct. We block Drill Peck and then take Corviknight to blow health with Throw Trap. 
Corviknight gets a crit. But then Hop heals Corviknight. Just for us to get a crit and take it out in one shot. Cinderace is next. We go for Throw Chop and take Cinderace to Yellow Hell. But then Cinderace goes for Counter. Hop gets Revenge, I see. I bring out Mountain Lord. Psycho Cut finishes off Cinderace. Snorlax is next. We switch to Skunk Hank. We start Toxic just to get first trip paralysis from Body Slam. We did not get another attack before going down. Aftermath took Snorlax to half health. Poison takes Snorlax to red health. Malmar Psycho Cut takes out Snorlax. Last is Big Kerchief, who was down to 3 Night Slashes. We cannot get the Water Bike, but we're not going to smack him off just yet. We're first going to the Lake of Outrage, where we will get the TM for Shadowfall, the final move for Obstacle's moveset. Our Battle of Marty is next. I start with Scrafty. Lightheart and Marty Scrafty both go down to a single brick break. Tasuko took two brick breaks, but we're confused with Swagger. Thankfully, we snap out Confusion and take out more Pico for Brick Break. The 7th gym is next. I start Scrafty against Pierce's Scrafty. We go for Fake Out and outspeed Pierce's Scrafty, assuming it used Fake Out as well. Two Brick Breaks take it out, but we're in Yellow Hole. Pierce sent out Obstacle. This is a first. I've never seen him send out Obstacle before Malamore. We use Sand Attack to avoid Obstruct, and Obstacle could not do much damage. So it goes down to two Brick Breaks. Malamar is next. We get Malamar to half health before Scrafty went down. I switched to Obstacle to finish off Malamar. Last is Skuntank. We went for Obstruct, but Skuntank went for Toxic, which still lands, so Obstacle is not poisoned. We could only get Skuntank to just above half health before Obstacle went down. I send out Malmar to chip at Skunk Tank with a Night Slash. We managed to take out Skunk Tank, but it took Malmar with it thanks to Aftermath. Our own Skunk Tank was still at full health, so we win. With Pierce up, we get the team for Snarl, our final move for Skunk Tank. Our team is now complete. The final gym is next. I start as Crafty and Malmar. Blagon's breaking swipe rose Malmar's attack stat thanks to Contrary. Psycho Cut takes Flygon to Yellow Health. Breaking Swipe's attack draw weakens Scrafty's Brick Break, so it didn't do much damage to Gigola. As Gigola set up Stealth Rocks, Flygon used Breaking Swipe again before going out. Scrafty takes Gigola to Yellow Health, but then Gigola and Sandstorm damage leaves Scrafty at 4 HP. Santa Con is next. Malamar gets a crit and takes Santa Con to a Sliver Health. Scrafty takes Gigalith to a sliver before going down. Oh, and Malamar is paralyzed from glare. I send out Skuntank. Snarl finishes off both Santa Cana and Gigalith. Last is Duraldon. Screech lowers Duraldon's defense, but then Duraldon's G-Max depletion takes Skuntank to red health. Malamar Psycho Cut gets a crit and takes Duraldon to a sliver health. Sucker Punch wins us our final badge. It's time to go to Winda, but before starting the semifinals, you pick up the Black Sludge and give it to Stunt Pink. Our first opponent is Morning. The start of the battle was almost a mirror match to the last Morning battle. Lockhart and Scrafty were one shots, but then this time Toxicroak started with Swagger. As we go for Sand Attack to lower the chance of getting confused by Swagger. Toxic then uses Toxic as Brick Break takes it to Red Hall. Mario uses a Forest Door as we hit ourselves. Venishok takes us to Red Hall as we bring Toxic Oak back to Red Hall. Scrafty goes down the poison. Malamar finishes off Toxic Oak. Warpink goes next. Malamar got hit with Torment, but Warpink goes down in two hits. I leave at Malamar for Grimstone, but it goes down to one Max Starfall. I send out Skunk Tank and get two screeches before Skunk Tank went down. I send out Obstagoo and go for Obstruct to block Spirit Break. Throw Chop goes over half Grimstarl's health, 
and Spirit Break also does over half. The next turn, Grimstar outspeeds but goes for Boko, so we take out Grimstar with one more Throat Chop. Our next battle is against Hop. I start with Scrafty. We started with Fake Out, but that activates Double Steadfast. Double then goes for Condor, as our Brick Break only takes Double to yellow health. One more Brick Break takes that Double, but we are paralyzed from Body Slam. Snorlax is next, as a one shot. Corviknight out. We survive Drill Pet and take Corviknight through yellow health with Brick Break. One more Drill Pet takes out Scrappy. I sit out Obstagoon and finish off Corviknight with Throw Chop. I sit out Skuntank with Picurchin. A crit Sucker Punch takes out Picurchin and lasts the Cinderace. We go for Toxic first and only get one Screech as Skuntank gets taken to Red Health. We go for Sucker Punch, taking half the Cinderace's health before going down. I send out Obstagoon. Hop then uses a full restore just to get one shot by Throw Chop. It's time to scale Rose Tower to find Leon, but at the top is the battle with Oleana. I start with Scrafty against Frostlass. Our Rossberry negates Will O Wisp, and we take out Frostlass with one payback. Serene is next. Chopkick gets rid of our Moxie Boost, so our Brick Break didn't do a lot of damage. Two acrobatics take out Scrafty, but Serena is a yellow health. I switch to Skuntank, who gets hit with the trap, so I switch to Obstagoon. Shadow Claw takes out Serena. Milotic is next. I switch back to Skuntank. Screech activates Milotic's competitive. Oops. We go for Toxic and hit Milotic with Sucker Punch before Skuntank went down. I send up Malamar. Night Slash finishes off my lord. Salazzle next. Venishok does good damage, but Salazzle goes down to a crit one shot. Lazarus Orbidor. I switch to Obstagoon to stalk Orbidor's Gigantamax. Obstagoon went down to poison damage from GMAX Balador. Malamar takes out Garbodor with Psycho Cut. The finals cannot begin tomorrow, but first is a battle of Bead. A Star Scrafty against Malamar. A rider neutralizes Mama's Intimidate. Grip Break takes Mama to a buff half health, as Mama one shot Scrafty with Play Rock. I switch to Obstagoon. We go for Obstruct to block Play Rock before taking out Mama with Shadow Claw. Gardevoir is next. We go for Obstruct, but Gardevoir used Calmine. Shadow Claw does big damage, but we get one shot by Dazzling Gleam. I send out Skuntank. Sucker Punch takes out Gardevoir. Rapidash is next. Rapidash went for takedown as we go for Screech. Sucker Punch one shots Rapidash and last is Hatterene. We got off two Screeches before Scott Tank went down. I sit out Malamar. We get a crit one shot with Nice Slash. It's on to our first final match against Nessa. I start off suit against Galisapod. We try to go for Obstruct, but Galisapod went for Sword Stance. Three times in a row. Thankfully, Throw Trap crits and activates Emergency Exit. CK comes out. It does big damage with Mega Horn, but goes down to two Throw Traps. Galispa is back, and Obstagoon goes down to First Depression. I switch to Skuntank, who finishes off Galispa with Sucker Punch. I switch to Scrappy for Bear Scooter. We start with Fake Out and go for Brick Break. Liquidation hits us hard, but two Brick Breaks take up Bear Scooter. Teleport is next. We do some damage before going down to Air Slash. I switch to Skuntake to go for Toxic and Style of the Rain. Teleport went down the storm. Last is Dreadnought. We got two Screeches before going to Malamore. Two Night Slashes take out Dreadnought. Our next battle is against B. I start at Malamore against Halucha. Halucha's high jump kick does big damage as our Psycho Cut takes Halucha to a sliver of health. B uses the four store, but our next Psycho Cut one shots. Falling is next and goes down to two Psycho Cuts. Surfetch is also to a KO, but we are in low health for Brick Break. Grab Block is a one shot and lasts in the champ. Psycho Cut takes Bachamp to a full half health, 
as Balabar goes down to G-Back to strike I set an obstacle to stall off the rest of the champ's Gigantamax before going to Skunk Egg. Sucker Punch takes the champ to Red Hell, but Skunk Egg goes down to two cross chops. After that, finishes off the champ. Last is right Hunt. I start Scrafty against Torkoal. Three Brick Breaks take out Torkoal, but Scrafty is in yellow health from Soul Beam. Tornair is next. We spam Sand Attack until Tornair runs out of Shell Traps. We then switch to attacking. Three Brick Breaks take out Tornair. Gudra is next. Two Brick Breaks take out Gudra. Lightout is a one shot and last is Duran on. Duran on outspeeds and take out Scrafty with G-Max Depletion. I send out Skunk Tank to Screech before sending out Obstacle. Two Throw Chops take out Duran on. It's time to fight Chairman Rose. I start with Obstacle against the Scavalier. We lowered Escavalier's defense with Obstruct, which allowed Throw Chop to take Escavalier to Red Health. Escavalier only set up Swords Dance, so I went down. Ferrothorn's Body Press did more damage than I wanted, but Ferrothorn goes down to a counter. For Kling Kling, we go for Obstruct and then Throw Chop, which took Kling Kling to low health. Obstacle goes down, so I switch to Strat. Kling Kling goes down to Brick Break. Berserker goes down to Brick Break and last is Kaparaja. Brick Break takes Kaparaja to low health, but Scrafty goes down to G-Max Steel Surge. I send out Skunk Tank. We go for Sucker Punch, which takes Kaparaja to red health, but Skunk gets one shot of Max Quake. I send out Malamar. Night Slash finishes off Kaparaja. Eternatus is next. I started with Skunk Tank. Two Screeches. And two Circuit Punches take out Eternatus. For Eternamax Eternatus, we just spam Screech to help Zacian and Zamzanta take out Eternatus. However, two Max Wormwoods did take out Skunkin. I send out Obstagoon just for Zacian to finish off Eternatus a moment later. It's time for our Championship Battle with Leon. I had somewhat of a plan, but Leon threw in a few monkey wrenches. Like, I didn't know his Rapierior had Mega Form. Not only is it tanky, it hits hard. Also, I challenged Leon severely under level. This is where the exception I mentioned earlier comes in. At this point, my only source of grinding were Wild Pokemon or Max Raid Dents. Battling Wild Pokemon takes forever when the experience is shared amongst four Pokemon. So I chose Dins. However, no Dynamax Pokemon makes going through two shields impossible, especially if they need five or more hits to be taken down. Well, after a few failed attempts, we returned to Leon with the whole team at level 67. I started with Malamar against Aegislash. Because of the contrary, Aegislash's King Shield gives Malamar an attack boost. This allows Night Slash to leave Aegis Slash at 1 HP. Aegis Slash's Shadow Ball takes Malamar to half health, and Leon used the Four Store, however, Aegis Slash goes down to Night Slash. Rapiri is next, so I switch to Obstagoon. We go for Obstruct to lower Rapiri's defense. We then try a second Obstruct, but it failed, so we got hit with Heat Crash. We go for Throw Chop as Rapiri activates our Citrus Bear. We then go back to Obstruct, which blocked Mega Ford. Rapiri goes down to one more throw chop. Axers is next. We try the double Obstruct strat again, and it works. So Haxers goes down to one throw chop. Out comes the other boom. Drum beating does not make physical contact, so there's no defense drop from Obstruct. We tuck the throw chop before Obstructing again. This time, Robo used Endeavor, which is physical. Robo goes down to throw chop. Next is Drag Pole. We skipped the Struck and went straight for Throw Chop, which takes Drag Pole to its liver health. Obstacle goes down, so I send in Skunt Tank. Sucker Punch takes out Drag Pole and last is Charizard. Skunk Tank goes down in two hits, but we got off a Screech. I send out Malamar. Malamar survives the Max Rock Fall. It takes Charizard to Red Health with a crit Night Slash. Charizard comes out of Dynamax 
it goes for Fire Blast. It misses, and Malamar takes out Charizard. We beat Pokemon Sword with only Pierce's team and no Dynamax. Thank you to everyone who watched this video, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and maybe leave a comment.